Hello and welcome to today's landscape photography critique with nine pictures from Hua Deng and I've actually imported all of these pictures into Lightroom so I can actually show you the adjustments and what I would do to the pictures and maybe even show you some different techniques and styles that you could go for rather than just explain them within Flickr. So let's get into the first picture right away and the thing that I really love here more than anything else is that your center point of attention and your most important, most interesting part of the picture is in the center of the entire photo. And additionally to that, another very, very important thing is that everything leads towards it. Of course, you have this main path which directly leads towards it, but you also have these two smaller paths which kind of lead toward it in a different way. Additionally to that, you even have the buildings which lead you in the center or towards the center of the picture in a very non-intrusive way. And you also even have kind of the same thing with these paths right here, which kind of leads you more into the center of the picture. And of course, also even the branches, which by the way, work really well as framing of the entire picture. And that way it is also not too empty up in the top left and the top right. So overall, I have to say compositionally, this is a really, really great picture. Everything works super well together. And additionally to that, you have these beautiful colors, this beautiful lighting from the late evening, but you also have this contrast between the greens, between the gray of the concrete, between the warm tones, and even in the sky, you have some very subtle and very fine and very natural looking tones that go from orange to kind of reddish to very faint reddish to light blue to very dark bluish colors on the top. So this picture is absolutely amazing. It might not be 100% symmetrical, but it really doesn't matter. It's an absolutely amazing picture, both in terms of the color, but even more so in terms of the composition and the elements that you have in the picture without making it look cluttered. And it's really, really beautiful. Absolutely love it. Then let's get to this one. Hmm. Okay, usually I'm not too big of a fan of this very short exposure time, which leads to a very kind of rough texture in the waves and in the water, but I really think it actually works here, partially because you have so many little exposure differences within the waves and within the water, from kind of medium bright to dark tones from the wave, and you have all of that in a very subtle way. I mean, just look at the water right here. You have so many subtle exposure differences it's really, really beautiful. And in terms of the foreground, you of course have from the bottom right, this wall leading you into the middle of the picture, but you also have the same thing from the left to once again, the middle of the picture. Now, I think that it really works well together. And you also have this dam or wall or whatever this is, which is quite interesting and pretty and really tells a story in itself. And by the way, also this ferry on the right of the picture adds a lot of interest and really makes the whole right part seem a lot less empty. Now, the only thing that I don't like here is that you have such an abrupt difference of color in the picture. Now, I always say that I really like complexification and difference in terms of not only exposure, but also in terms of color. And I absolutely think that you can make something like that. For example, you've done it right here. This right part of the C is really different from the tones towards the left, but it still works together. It blends in. But here on the left, it's just way too severe. You go from blue in a very harsh line towards this kind of orangey reddish color, which I really think is over the top. So what I would do here is, you know, I think it actually works to have kind of a warmer tone towards the left. It adds really a lot of differentiation and once again, interest, but it's just way too much. So I'd probably do something like this and keep in mind, this is really just a fast edit right here. So you of course would want to make this look a lot better, but point being is you really don't have to make it that severe to make it interesting. For example, just like this, you have a lot of difference and it's just not as overdone. And at the same time, of course, I would make this a lot smoother 
and make the gradient not quite as harsh. But other than that, a really small thing and very easily fixable thing, I think this is an absolutely great picture, love the color, love the composition, and love the picture in general. Then let's see here. Huh. Now the first thought that came to me is definitely bring down the highlights, because you do have some quite bright spots, maybe even reflections, and for example here you can see it's pretty much pure white, so by just bringing down the highlights it really makes it look a lot better and kind of takes away some of that reflection. Now to the whole picture, once again, really good. The thing that I really like about this photo is that you have so many different elements, from the foreground right here to the lake itself with the beautiful colors, and once again a little bit of a color difference from the left being more greenish, going into the blue tones right here, I absolutely love that, and then it goes to the hills right here and also on the right side, but you even have some mountains in the background, Maybe it's a little bit close here, but I i mean, you would have to go way higher to make this more distinct, so that would probably not be possible, and I still think it's not quite as close that it would not work. And of course, you also have the sky in the background, with once again a little bit of exposure and also color difference. So overall, I have to say, maybe definitely bring down the highlights, but maybe even bring down the exposure a little bit and then in exchange bring up the whites. And I think that might even work better, but you know, as a picture as a whole, by the way, I would probably um, make this a little bit brighter after all. So you still have some differentiation in terms of the exposure and not everything super flat but at the same time, just keep the overall picture a little bit more dark. And you know, this is just personal preference, of course, there's a lot of things that you can do, but as a whole picture, I absolutely love it. Once again, really cool, maybe not quite as amazing as this or the first one, just because there are kind of a lot of similar elements, mainly of course the trees, but it is still a great picture, maybe just not as amazing and as interesting as the previous ones. So let's get into the next one and the fourth picture. This is really, really amazing. I absolutely love this right away. So let me tell you why. You have this road from the bottom. It doesn't lead you through the entire picture, but it really doesn't have to. I absolutely love the shape of this road with all of these curves. I love that there's a truck and a little car here, which really gives a sense of dimension and scale to the whole scene. I mean, this is absolutely amazing, but also this curve of the road works so well together with all of these other curves that you have in the picture. So mainly being the tree lines, and here for example another tree line, then you have these very distinct tree lines against the white background, which works so well together. And by the way, the road doesn't just go from the bottom to the right, it kind of also gives you an option to continue the road right here through the whole trees into the rest of the picture and eventually into the mountains in the background. And speaking of the mountains, I absolutely love the contrast between the rocks and the ledges of the mountains, going into the kind of very vague vegetation right here, going into the really big trees, going into the road, going into the foreground, which is very well done as well. You have some foreground, it's not empty, but at the same time, it doesn't take away too much attention. And honestly, this is my favorite picture so far. Even though your previous pictures were great already, and especially the first two ones were absolutely amazing, here you have the same thing, everything just works, you have these beautiful lines and shapes, and at the same time, you have all of that in a very epic and very enormous landscape. So I absolutely love this, also a little thing is that you have the snow of course, which gives additional contrast between the rocks where there's not quite snow on it, to the trees and everything else. So it's absolutely amazing to have even more contrast, and I also like what you did here with the sky, it's very faded out, very soft, which almost kind of blends in with the snow and the mountains in the background. So absolutely great picture, love it, and I wouldn't do a thing to it. Let's see here, it's getting a little bit long, but I think there are five pictures left, so let's take a look at this one. 
this is a really interesting scenery, I would love to know where that is. But the thing is, it looks almost a little bit abstract, but then you have this foreground thing right here, which is this kind of grass, which almost kind of cuts it off. Now, it's definitely not a big thing, but I think if you would just crop this out, or preferably, of course, already have cropped it in camera, but I just think this works a little bit better. That way my eye is more contained within the picture rather than just this very small stripe of grass, which kind of gets in the way of the whole flow from the foreground to the background over all of these hills. Now, in terms of the editing, I think you did a really great job here. You could, of course, make it very contrasty, which gives it kind of a different look. But this is also a very, very valid and very interesting look in itself. Now, another thing that I might consider is just to bring up the vibrance a little bit, even if you don't really like overdone pictures like this, you know, you don't have to, have to bring it up that far. But just a hint of vibrance might actually work. So overall, love the picture. There's a lot more things that you could do. For example, another look would, of course, to make, make it just a little bit warmer, mix it with contrast, and then bring down the highlights probably, and maybe even the overall exposure. That way it's kind of more vibrant, more punchy, but this might not be the thing that you want. So at the end, I absolutely love the picture. Just maybe, you know, maybe afterwards, I'd say, even bring up the color temperature just a tad bit, even if you don't really want a very contrasty or a very dramatic overall picture. Let's go on to the next one and... Hmm, okay. So this is by far the most boring and the worst picture of you so far. And it's not bad, it still has something to it, it is not completely blown, for example, here with the sun. You do have this shoreline towards the left, but honestly, it's just too cluttered, there's too much going on, it's not really interesting or pretty at all. And also, the waves right here, this is, I think, a really good example of a picture where a short exposure time for the water really doesn't work. I think if you would have gone for a long exposure and a very silky, smooth kind of water, as well as clouds in the sky, it might have worked with some other editing, but how it is right now, it's really boring, it's nothing to it, honestly. I'm just gonna give it a real quick edit on what I would do, you know, this is just kind of, um, you're not gonna be able to fix this fully in Lightroom, but just to kind of show you my idea of what I would do here. So first of all is to just grab an adjustment brush, bring up the exposure right here for the sky, and just make this less, uh, you know, dark in the sky. I really don't like that here at all. And then also grab another adjustment brush, this time with a little bit of minus exposure and a lot of minus clarity, just to get rid of a lot of this texture and this ugly detail in the waves. And once again, you're not gonna be able to do this as well as if you would do this in camera, but you kind of get the idea, maybe even more of minus clarity here, and make this super silky, this works a lot better. And then another thing that I really would consider doing is just make this entire shoreline completely black, because there are so many things going on that are not really interesting. And once again, this is just a terrible edit, very quick, but I think if you would really do this well in camera and with editing, then I really think that you could actually have a decent picture, because then it's not so much about the foreground and the whole composition and the dark sky, but more about the reflections and the different colors, which I really think is the most important and most interesting thing in this picture. So once again, just a quick thought and idea of what I would do to it, but even then it still doesn't look that great. So let's rather go on to the next one. Okay, so it definitely has something to it. I absolutely love the blue tones. They're very vibrant, very punchy. And you also have this differentiation from the dark blue tones to the medium blue tones to, of course, this almost greenish aquamarine color in the foreground in the bay itself. And also another thing, if at all possible, then wait until sunset and reshoot the scene, maybe with some clouds. And also a very, very big thing is that you just cut off the foreground like that. Now, if you want to cut off the foreground, then you have to do it in a more distinctive way, something like this. 
where it really doesn't look as like an accident, but if you just have it like this, then it's really something missing, it isn't really pleasant, and I would absolutely love to see the entire foreground, the entire bay area right there, but if that's not possible, then once again, do it in a more distinctive fashion and really cut it off so it doesn't look like an accident. Overall, I'd still say that this is a pretty nice picture, but there are definitely a lot of areas that could make it a lot better. So let's go into the next one regardlessly, and this is absolutely amazing. This might be my new favorite, maybe along with the fourth picture of yours. Okay, so the first thing that my eye goes to is absolutely the bridge, and the bridge in itself is very interesting, but the main thing that it does is connect the left part of the picture all the way to the, to the cliff right here, the end of the bridge, to the rest of the picture into the distance, and this is really really huge, along with this beautiful coastline, these cliffs, and the uh, waves that go against the rocks and the shoreline itself. It really works so well together, it gives you a sense of scale, because you have the bridge in the foreground, and then you have kind of these cliffs, and these smaller cliffs, and these even smaller cliffs in the background, so I absolutely loved that already. Also you have some rocks here in the sea, which kind of makes it less empty, that's an additional point of interest. You have a really beautiful watercolor, the beautiful hues here from the aquamarines to the darker colors to the rest of the blue tones almost, and all of that stuff, really really beautiful. But you also have some of these clouds enveloping the hills in the distance, which also kind of gives a contrast between the very clear, very contrasty foreground going into the kind of hazy, distant, misty hills. And you also have the same thing going on with the water from the foreground being very distinctive, very harsh almost, going into the distance which makes it gradually a lot softer, a lot more hazy, and then going eventually into the very soft and very almost indistinguishable horizon line right here. I absolutely love that so much, I love that you didn't try to bring out this horizon line, but rather melt it together with the sky, absolutely beautiful, and also kind of the, the structures of the clouds almost kind of point toward the picture in my opinion. So this is an absolutely stunning, absolutely gorgeous picture, everything works, it is a very epic, very beautiful landscape, but at the same time compositionally, color-wise and within the whole sky and clouds and stuff like that, you really manage to get an amazing overall picture. And I was actually thinking about bringing down the highlights, but honestly it just kind of gets rid of some of that glare in the distance and some of that haze, which I really think is essential for this picture, maybe just grab an adjustment brush with some minus exposure over the bridge right here, so the bright parts right there aren't quite as intrusive, but other than that, it's an absolutely stunning picture. So let's see what you got as a last picture, and this is absolutely amazing, beautiful shot of Half Dome, if you would tell me that this is the wallpaper from an apple, then I would absolutely believe you, this is really really gorgeous, beautiful colors shot at sunset or sunrise. It's a very subtle difference also from right here, which is kind of almost a bit uh, magenta-ish, going into the foreground, which is a lot more neutral. And I also like that you kind of went with the very low saturation style, and that way I really think you don't overpower anything and you still have so much attention on these beautiful textures and latches and all of these lines within the rocks. You know, if you would just bring up the vibrance like crazy, it might be a little bit more spectacular, but at the same time, it just takes away too much and almost makes the whole picture a bit too cluttered. So absolutely amazing picture, the only thing that I might want to consider is to make these trees a little bit more greenish, now this is kind of difficult to do right here, so you might even have to go into Photoshop for that. And other than that, you know, other than the tree thing that you absolutely do not have to do, by the way, it's just kind of an idea that you might want to consider. I absolutely love the picture and I think it's gorgeous. 
So I'm back in Flickr and I mean you have amazing pictures but if I would have to give you my pick of what is the best to kind of worst if you will then I would actually pick this one first. It's really subjective, you have so many great pictures but I think that everything works here, it's really really epic and massive. Then second one would be this one, third one right there even though probably this could be the first one just as well. But then I'd also pick this one right here, it really works so well together, love the composition here and all of the elements. This one is also pretty interesting. I for my taste would probably increase the saturation and the contrast a little bit and definitely crop out the bottom here. But it's still a very very interesting picture. This one also works really well and then the last three ones would probably be these three right here with this one definitely being the worst. I really don't like this one. These other two ones are still pretty cool. So once again, this is just my personal opinion. Don't take it too serious. Just look at some of the points and you know, consider yourself whether it makes sense or not. You definitely have amazing quality in your pictures, not only in terms of resolution, but also in terms of composition and color and editing. Just everything works really well together with your photos. So that was it for this video, thank you all very much for watching this very lengthy video. I'm gonna be back with some kind of Lightroom tutorial next time. Until then, take care and I'll see you in the next episode.